Employers of Reddit, what are your crazy employee stories? We have this one relatively crazy woman that works in her shop. She's got a son who at the time of this story was around 16. This woman decides that her son needed some experience sexually with an older woman so she actually went to one of the women in our accounting department who was around 60 or so and asked her if she'd be interested in having sex with her 16-year-old son because she wanted his first time to be with someone experienced. I ask you not, I was sitting outside our HR person's office when a complaint was filed. A few years ago, I was a kitchen manager at a place in Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't know if it is common knowledge or not, but drug use in kitchens is very common and most of the time accepted. That being said, I had a line cook who had come and tweaked out on cocaine. He came to me, explained the situation, apologized, and asked if he could run somewhere and come in a little later in better shape. It was slow, and most of the prep was done, so I said he could have an extra hour. He comes back 45 minutes later and is calmed down, stopped shaking, and had a grin on his face. He was one of my better line cooks, so I was glad to see that I didn't have to reprimand him. We begin the dinner service and everything is running smoothly when I look across the line, and he begins to look as if he's falling asleep while working the grill. He assured me that he was fine. 15 minutes go by, and I see him collapse, landing with his face and arm on the grill. He didn't even wake up. I run across the kitchen and push him off, skin literally melted to the grill. As he hits the ground, he wakes up and simply says, Ah, chef, may I go to the hospital? The smell was horrific. At 7 p.m. on a Friday night, we closed the restaurant, opened all the doors and windows, and cleaned up the mess. We bought new plates for the grill, don't worry. As I'm doing my order for the next day around 10 p.m., he comes back in, bandaged up, and says, Chef, can I help with anything? Astonished, I couldn't reply. He continued to explain that he went to his dealer's house, got a S ton of Oxycontin, snorted it so he could calm down, and just nodded out. But it's okay. They gave me morphine, so I can still work, and I'm AD, so don't worry about workers' comp. I just want to still have a job. Two weeks later, he returned to work, sober, and hasn't touched a drug or had a drink since. I arranged for his hospital bills to be paid, but he had no paid time off. One of the best employees and craziest MF I will ever meet. Edit, after seeing how much you guys like this story, I contacted him, it's been about three years. He met his now fiancé at an NA meeting, is expecting a daughter in a few months, and was just called about becoming the sous chef at a restaurant opening in Atlanta. He moved there because he said that Charlotte was too dangerous for him and there were too many haunting memories. There was this Asian lady at my first job out of college who would sneak away into the lunchroom, which was in the basement of the building, and steal lunches. She'd go through all of them taking bites or eating it all. If she took a bite of something she didn't like, she'd throw it in the garbage. Staff would come downstairs to find their lunches devoured or in the trash with one bite taken out of it. This all came to a head one day when some guy was up in arms after his meatloaf sandwich fell victim to the Asian lunch thief. He ended up catching her, she was fired, and keyed everyone's cars. Worked at a new fries that opened in my old town a number of years back. It was pretty bad initially, and they really overworked employees. The turnover was huge, and later a suit was filed against this specific fries. In any case, when I started, there was a blonde woman whose name I forget now, let's call her Beth. Beth was overly enthusiastic to the point of being incredibly annoying to any and every employee slash customer. Beth was apparently also a pathological liar and frequently left her shifts early to do God knows what. When she was fired, she came back with a nice, purple present. All wrapped up with a white bow and everything. It was meant to be an apology to the manager, but she quickly dropped it off and took off saying she was busy. It smelled like it had been doused in a gallon of perfume, but she seemed half crazed, so whatever. The manager for her department at the time took it and opened it near the registers. Inside was a lump of S. She S in a box and gave it to her manager. As a gift, of course. Edit, I should clarify that the box was not large, half a foot length and widthwise. There was no smearing or smudging along the box. It was about as neat as you could make a turd in a box. I work as a supervisor in a drugstore. One night, one of my employees was seen just letting someone walk out with hundreds of dollars of merchandise. A few minutes later, he went outside to collect the shopping carts. I'm reviewing the video evidence of this happening at the time, and on the phone with my store manager. The employee was outside for a pretty decent amount of time. I hadn't noticed right away because I was busy collecting the evidence, but my other cashier called me up and told me that he still hadn't come back in, 15 minutes later. As I walk downstairs, he comes back inside with one shopping cart, and the guy was high as a kite. Because I am not a store manager, my hands are rather tied as far as what I'm able to do at the time, so I just send him home and keep someone else for the rest of the night. 
The employee called me later. I happened to be best friends with his sister, and he started talking about how he hates snitches and that people should just leave other people alone. He was rambling on and on. The next day, the loss prevention manager was there, as well as my manager. The employee was terminated. It turned out that he would let his friends walk out with baskets of merchandise without scanning it. Then he would go to collect carts, and they would give him meth in payment for all the stuff. He thought he had this master plan, and that he was sticking it to the man. It was really sad to see. Since then, the employee has been incarcerated and successfully completed rehab. I am glad to say that he is doing so much better now and has apologized profusely about the entire incident. We own a salvage yard, junkyard, and we usually have a few cats around. Every now and then, one of these cats will claim us and live in the office. We feed it, take it to the vet, and it becomes our junkyard pet cat. One particular cat was awesome, and all the guys love this cat, even the burly guys. They would all share their lunches with the cat. This one guy that used to work for us was a real A. One day he decided that he didn't like the cat anymore. He took a can of spray paint and painted the poor kitty. All over, head to tail. When the cat came into the office, my husband, who is the boss, went ballistic. The first thing my husband did was wash the cat off as best as he could. Then he went into the shop and raised holy hell. Screaming at everyone until a new guy finally told him that he saw Jim spray paint the cat. My husband was raging and wanted to really F this guy up bad but instead, called the cops and filed animal cruelty charges and fired him on the spot. This guy had the balls to file for unemployment for unlawful termination. He was denied several times but kept opposing the judgment. We fought his argument all the way to the highest level of state review, where he was granted full unemployment benefits. The reason was, even though he broke the law while at work, it doesn't, didn't, state in our handbook no spray painting of cats or no unlawful activities at the workplace. We thought that would have been a given. The guy finally got his, though, kinda. He's serving a year in jail for fleeing from the police while drunk. The cat lived for several more years. One guy would always come in on Sunday to feed her, and he found her dead. She had died in her sleep, and the box filled with blankets that they kept for her. Bob, not his real name, oh god, Bob, not his real name. Bob lasted two weeks, which was about two weeks longer than he should have. During orientation, he challenged me on several of our rules, many of them having to do with health and safety. He did not want to wear eye protection or closed-toed shoes since it was too hot in our climate-controlled manufacturing plant. He wore a Bluetooth headset which he proceeded to answer several times during orientation, and when informed that personal cell phone use was only permitted during scheduled breaks, he informed me that he was conducting business and needed it. This was when I decided Bob needed to go, however, HR and the company president also needed to sign off on it, and after three hours, they decided I had not given him a fair shake. Bob was untrainable. He had one job to do, balance material and a centrifuge and make sure it was draining. We had charts posted outlining how many of what to put in and how to arrange things. So, after working with him a day showing him and overseeing him arrange and balance, I was satisfied that I could leave him unattended for five minutes while I grabbed a washroom break. I was dead wrong. I started to hear the clanking of metal on metal and ran back to shut down the machine to find that it was not loaded or balanced properly. When asked why he loaded it against regulation, he said, it takes too long to arrange everything. Still, nobody wanted to get rid of him except me. So, as the GM of a manufacturing plant, I spent the next week with Bob babysitting him as he loaded a centrifuge until I finally had to leave him to do my actual job. In under a half hour, from improper loading, he had damaged the machine. While I was setting up the backup, I instructed him to go to the boardroom to review the loading charts and that I would call him back when I was finished. About 20 minutes later, I go to the boardroom, no Bob. There is nobody in the men's room. As I'm walking back to my production floor, I notice that there is somebody in the president's office. This is pretty strange since the president is out of the office that day, and the only two people who are permitted in the office are myself and the office manager. Wouldn't you know it, just down the hall, the office manager is happily chugging away at some reports in her office. So, I go in, only to reveal Bob watching some of the most depraved Spanish prawn on the president's computer. While I didn't have the power to, I terminated him on the spot and cleared it with HR and the president later, who, after a quick viewing of his browser history, agreed that it was justified. Apparently, Bob didn't know how to browse incognito. Bob has since filed a case with HRSDC for wrongful dismissal. I was a supervisor for a high-end retail store that we were preparing for grand opening. We had hired one guy, we'll call him Tom, who was in his early to mid-twenties. Over the course of a couple of weeks, I noticed that I barely ever saw Tom during his shifts after I sent him off to do something. One day, 
I sent him onto the sales floor with a car of merchandise to stock and realized that it had been over 20 minutes and all of the other employees had already been back two to three times. I was the only manager on, so I knew he didn't get sent to another task, so I asked if anyone had seen him. One girl turned to me and said, he's probably in his cubby, and then proceeded to show me where it was. Apparently, Tom had created a cubby for himself about three to four feet wide behind some old shelving units. He had stolen a heated blanket, pillow, and various food items off of the sales floor, and that's where he had been hanging out for the majority of his shifts for over a month, checking in with various managers at 30 to 45 minute intervals so as to be seen by someone. This was his third or fourth offense, so we fired him. He proceeded to rip his shirt in half and start crying while screaming, why, over and over again at the top of his lungs. We then escorted him out of the building, where he continued screaming and crying while beating his chest and hawking loogies on our windows. This kid was a complete T, harassed all of the girls relentlessly, even me as supervisor, tried to sell drugs on the premises, and stole nonstop. I don't know why he seriously didn't understand why he was being fired. I worked for a big company years ago as the shipping manager. One of the guys I hired was an ex-Russian army guy. He was pretty good, a hard worker and all that. Still a little off, if you know what I mean. So one day he doesn't show up and no phone call. The next day he calls me and he sounds like he's high. He's in the hospital. After work, I go by the hospital, we were kind of friends, and his whole right side is black as night. Not a stitch of white. Serious bruising. Broken leg and arm. I asked him what the hell happened, and he told me that he and his friends were having party in his fifth floor apartment. He was having an argument with one of his friends, as seemed to be a regular Russian thing for them to do. His friend was saying that he never follows through or something like that. So my friend stated that he always follows through. My friend says, if I told you I would jump out that window, I would. His friend says, ha ha ha, you wouldn't dare. So crazy Yuri runs and leaps out the window, down onto the parking lot below. He spent over a month in the hospital to prove a point. Ridiculous. He quit, and I didn't see or hear from him until a year later when he called me on the phone, all drunk, telling me I was Jesus. The end. Pretty sure I've told this story before, but it fits. I was working at Git Fiddle Center right out of high school. The turnover rate at a store like that is pretty high. If I remember correctly, I saw 70 new hires in the two years I worked there. One guy we hired lasted less than a day. He was introduced to everyone, but on that day every register was occupied. So he was sent into our warehouse to help them do stocking and to learn the computer system. However, as I found out later, it was pretty evident that he was at the very least functionally illiterate. So the warehouse manager gave the guy an X-Acto knife and had him go bust down cardboard boxes. However, after about an hour or so, he couldn't be found. The events that follow I was not directly witness to, just told about after the fact. After searching for this man for a while, he was discovered sitting in a pile of gig bags at the top of one of the warehouse shelves, about 15 feet off the ground, singing softly to himself, smiling broadly, with tears on his face, and cutting his wrists with the knife. From where I was, all I knew was that the GM and a couple of the AMs got paged to the warehouse, and soon after we heard sirens in our parking lot. The GM, a guy with a bit of a temper, was heard yelling very loudly in his office right afterward, though who he was yelling at, I don't know. Never saw that kid again. Employee asked that Friday off to watch a big darts contest, failed to give nearly enough notice, but what the hell, okay. Phones the boss at home Sunday. I'm through to the third round, which is on Monday. Can I have Monday off? You said you were going to watch a darts contest. Well, yeah, but I wasn't expecting to get past the first round, and I would have been watching after that. Can I have tomorrow off? No, you're needed. It's too short notice. Oh. Okay. Doesn't turn up for work on Monday. In the evening, his girlfriend rings up. Paul's made it through to the fourth round, tomorrow. He asked me to call and say he can't be at work tomorrow. Sorry, but if he isn't at work tomorrow 8 a.m., he needn't bother turning up at all doesn't come to work Tuesday. Turns up 8 a.m. Wednesday and seems genuinely surprised when he is told to get lost, he's fired. Our sales manager had an office. An office with a door that he chose to leave open. He also had a monitor facing the door that could have easily been turned around. And yes, he loved his prawn. Everyone here believes he was just stupid. I don't think there's any way he wasn't getting off to people watching him. I've had a few crazy co-workers. The drunk guy. He used to show up to work drunk at 9 a.m. and continue to add rum to his beverages all day until he was barely intelligible, usually by noon. Somehow he got away with it for a long time, probably because he was a nice guy overall and did a relatively good job at work. 
but the balls on that guy. The cat lady. This lady wore clothes to work that her cats must have been peeing on for months and were never washed. She also wore perfume, which did nothing to mask the scent. We think she must really not have noticed the smell. It was really awful. We had a small room in the building for our division. About 10 people in a 15 by 10 room with desks against every wall. It literally made your eyes water. She was actually let go because of this, since people had complained and she refused to do anything about her hygiene. The ghetto girls. Two ghetto girls tried to beat me up. I'm a girl, in our office because they hated me. One girl actually took off her rings, earrings and started unzipping her knee-high boots while screaming that she was going to kick my ass in the office and she didn't give a s about her job. I literally laughed in her face until I couldn't breathe. Needless to say, she and her cohort were both gone soon afterwards. We used to sing these boots are made for walking every time the aggressive girl would walk by, until she was fired, about two weeks later. The creepy Facebook guy. This guy added every coworker on Facebook after his first day, complete with a private message saying something like, I'm not a creep, let's just be friends so I can see all your pictures. His FB name, instead of his real name being displayed, was a reference to cocaine, and he had multiple photo albums of dead animals and himself holding guns. I never added him, but someone else did and showed everyone. Upon hiring, he immediately whipped out his cell phone in front of some of my coworkers and started telling a friend that he was going to be tested for cocaine and OMG what was he going to do. He also couldn't handle any task without freaking out. I mean anything from talking to a customer, phone sales, to even being asked to refill the copier. Somehow he lasted six months or so before his behavior got so weird that they let him go. We were convinced that he would show up with a gun after that, but we never saw him again. The compulsive liar. This woman was a compulsive liar. Here are some of her best tales. She was married to a Middle Eastern prince. Nope, was really rich and just worked to have something to do. Not really. Told the entire office I was a cocaine addict because I got promoted to a position that she wanted. I'm fat. Have you ever seen a fat cokehead? Regardless, I certainly was not using cocaine at all and there was no reason to believe I was other than allergies that made my nose run. Once people started calling her out on her lies, she immediately developed uterine cancer disappeared from work, and told people she had an emergency total hysterectomy and was beginning chemo treatments. Some people fell for it, but everyone soon found out that it was not true, when the company asked her for medical proof of her long absences from work and she could not provide any, which is ridiculous for someone who supposedly had a hysterectomy and was undergoing chemo. Unfortunately, this was after an office pool was taken up to help her with her expenses during her purported illness, and many people were very upset about her taking money from us under false pretenses. I did not donate, as I knew for a fact she was a compulsive liar, nor did most people in our department because they were aware as well. She kept the money and refused to answer anyone's phone calls after this incident. She was fired for missing so much work with no medical excuse. The dieting manager, my former female manager would mock everyone around her for eating typical lunch fare sandwiches, fast food, pizza, etc. because she was on a diet. Then she would sit at her desk and eat a salad with tons of cheese, bacon, and dressing on it and be about how hard it was for her to lose weight. She wasn't dumb at all, she just didn't seem to understand that a salad isn't healthy if you put fattening things on it, no matter what literature we showed her to help her eat healthier. The fake worker, the customer service rep dude who literally faked every piece of work he was supposedly doing for over six months and then was shocked when he was fired. The sad part is I think he spent more time faking evidence of doing work than he would have spent actually doing the work. He also was a DJ, but had no DJ equipment and insisted that putting together playlists on his iPod to be played at the local bar's DJ night, they let people make a playlist of a few songs to be played over the bar's stereo system. It's pretty fun actually, made him a DJ. The sleeping newbie, the girl who was hired on a friend's recommendation showed up on the first day of work, accepted the company manual, and was told to read it for a while and someone would be with her very shortly to begin training. She immediately proceeded to lay the manual on her desk, put her head down, and go to sleep. I don't mean she accidentally fell asleep while reading it, I wrote half of the manual, it's really boring, unfortunately, so I couldn't blame her if that were the case, I mean we watched her sit down and settle in for a nap. She actually swore at the manager who woke her up for interrupting her sleep, and then stormed out after being told that she would no longer be needed at the company, with the manual. Maybe it was a really comfy pillow? The cat cab lady, the mid-forties lady who lived alone with her two cats in a studio apartment two blocks from the job, but refused to walk to the office. She would always ask people for money so she could take a cab to work including a stop at the Dunkin Donuts one block from the office so she could get coffee. The holiday party disaster, the girl who was hired two weeks before the company holiday party, dinner and open bar at a nice Italian place we had many company functions at, good times, spent the whole two weeks before sucking up to everyone horribly, she was not good at it, not even a little, and generally just being annoying and incompetent at her job. 
When she got to the party, she got s-faced 30 minutes in and proceeded to spend the rest of the night buying people drinks at an open bar and interrupting the big boss toast. Let's just say that was a really bad idea. The culmination of the night was her offering a shot she bought to one of the senior managers, who shoved it back at her and said, Honey, you know we are paying for all these drinks, right? When I want a drink, I'll get myself one since I'm footing the bill. Priceless. The multilingual IT guy, the Russian IT guy who spoke three languages and would sometimes get flustered during times of stress and start mixing all three languages into his sentences. Usually, he would stop, think for a second, yell F, then walk out and come back when he was more composed and could stick to one language at a time. That was more funny than crazy though. I seriously could go on, but that's enough for this thread. While I wasn't an employer, I worked for the personnel office. Someone asked me where the applications were and I pointed to a table that the girl came back because she had trouble filling it out. Apparently, she was filling out our cake order forms that were placed next to the job applications. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now!